This Week in Politics on KSFY. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen. Thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. Coming up this evening, the road to the White House. Kamala Harris and Julian Castro speak out on what they see as missed opportunities for leadership in Washington. Also, the State of the Union address, what the president focused on and reaction from our tri-state congressional delegation. But we will begin here tonight with the continuing effects of the U.S. trade war with China, now in its seventh month. And while negotiations continue, no solid firm agreement has yet been reached. And that fact has business leaders here at home concerned about what is happening now and what will likely happen down the road. The U.S. trade war with China has been in place in earnest since the middle of last July. The president says he needs to send China a message that years of what he calls inequitable one-sided trade policy must come to an end. And for seven months now, it has been farmers who have felt the brunt of that trade war, with ag exports from the U.S. to the lucrative Chinese market halted. We're still suffering from the negative effects of those. And certainly in this area, uh, one of the things that we're watching is the implications to our agricultural export markets, uh, for which China is just so important. How important is that Chinese market? How can trade with one country end up meaning so much? For context, listen to what now former South Dakota Lieutenant Governor Matt Michaels told me just a few months ago about the importance of China and his impatience with the trade war. I asked him if he had concerns about the ongoing nature of the disagreement between the U.S. and China. More than concerns personally. Um, you know me pretty well. I can get animated and, and go ballistic. I've lived in that part of the world. I've lived in the Far East. China adds South Dakota's population every month. Let's think about that. The Chinese market is amazingly lucrative because of their population growth and their continuing economic growth. And American farmers, South Dakota farmers, are locked out. And the longer the trade war continues, the more its tentacles will stretch into more parts of the economy. It's not only uh, those ag producers that are going to be affected, but we are a banking community. And so we have several of our local banks that have uh, loans tied up in, in those assets as well. Uh, and so these, these things can radiate out into economies. Farming operations and banks and all things connected with them. Ag dependent businesses, small town economies waiting to see when this comes to an end. And even when it does, how much damage has been done? Since July, China has sought out other trading partners to fill in the gaps left by the absence of American goods. Directly affecting South Dakota, China's new and growing relationships with South American countries and their agricultural goods. Once the trade war ends, it's likely China will keep those new trading relationships in place, meaning the U.S. could end up with less of the pie after the trade war than they did before it started. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that, that South Dakota's got to be cognizant of, and uh, we continue to remind our national leaders. Anytime you have a large disruption uh, to, a, to a major trading uh, partner and, and major trading nations, uh, particularly with, as, with respect to soybeans and other grain products, those are commodities. There are other uh, nations that can fill that trading gap. Being aware of all of this, Jason Ball with the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce has had consistent contact with South Dakota's congressional delegation, hoping they can send some sort of message to the White House that the longer this trade war lasts, the more serious the long-term consequences will be for the U.S. economy and for farmers everywhere. They have been excellent advocates for the state of South Dakota and certainly for Sioux Falls specifically in terms of understanding where the chamber's at, where the general business community is at, where agricultural producers are at. Uh, they're doing an excellent job in, in articulating that to the uh, national leaders at this time. The president and CEO of the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce, Jason Ball. Still to come on tonight's This Week in Politics, Cory Booker takes his first steps towards development of a solid foothold of support in Iowa. And the State of the Union address, and what one Minnesota congresswoman says the president should have touched on, but didn't. That's when This Week in Politics continues, right here on KSFY. Don't go away. We'll be right back.